Rock art is important for people around the world because it is the most long-lasting and significant visual archive of human experience. Often rock art sites are in spectacular parts of landscapes. Uh, sometimes they are spiritual places and, and have spiritual meaning for indigenous peoples. The aesthetics is powerful. The history in the rock art is incredible. There are depictions of extinct animals, depictions of encounters between different groups of people, for instance, Macassans and Europeans arriving in Australia. And rock art sites as a whole reflect our human history of over 40,000 years. I'm Professor Paul Tason. I'm an Australian Research Council Laureate Fellow, and I'm also a Professor of Archaeology and Anthropology at Griffith University. This allows me to direct an incredible team of people to work on the topic of rock art conservation and Indigenous well-being. The Laureate Project focuses on rock art conservation and management for future generations. And a key aspect is to articulate why rock art is so important for Indigenous Australians today and how it is related to their health and well-being. When I talk to Aboriginal people across Australia about the importance of rock art, they emphasise that it is part of their living culture. It's one of the most important aspects of their heritage and it has significance today. They say that if sites are damaged or destroyed, that affects them not only emotionally, but also spiritually and physically. And it also will affect future generations by denying them this link to their past. So well-being is closely related to heritage because heritage tells the story of where people have come from and helps them uh, ground themselves in the present. Many Aboriginal elders I've spoken to and younger individuals have said that when they go to rock art sites and the natural settings that they are often a part of, they feel better, especially if they have been sick. When they go to these places and they look at the imagery and they think about their ancestors and the past, it calms them. It sometimes gives them a bit of a rush of adrenaline, seeing amazing imagery for the first time. So there are actual physical effects that they describe. Unfortunately, Australia has never had a national rock art conservation strategy. So a key part of the Laureate is to develop one that can be implemented in all states and territories across the country. So we're working as a team and as individuals with different Aboriginal communities and elders to incorporate Indigenous perspectives into this strategy and to bring Western science together with traditional knowledge. People call this working together, others say it's standing side by side. Some Aboriginal people describe it as having two toolkits. Um, so we take some tools from the, the Western toolbox, some from the Indigenous toolbox, and some elders say that they want to create almost a third form of knowledge to look after rock art in the future. And this is what the Laureate is all about. Whenever I do field work across Australia, in Southeast Asia, in other parts of the world, I work closely with local communities, Indigenous people, as, as well as local archaeologists. It's very important to study rock art in this collaborative way because you learn so much more about the imagery, the sites, the landscapes that they're an integral part of. Also, if you're going to look after rock art to do any conservation, you need to have permission from the communities because you might do something that actually upsets them in a, in a huge way. And you may damage some sacred aspect of the site, for instance, or by not showing respect, bring harm to them or, or to yourself. So we work collaboratively and that opens up new windows into the past and present so that we learn much, much more about rock art than having a Western-focused approach.
It's very rare that we do physical intervention at sites uh, because often we can do more damage than good. But there are certain things we can do to remedy situations, remove graffiti for instance. We also have to be very careful with rock art tourism because some sites are loved to death. The wrong sort of infrastructure is installed, wooden viewing decks for instance, which then go up in flames and, and destroy the rock art in the process. Some sites aren't managed well and tourists touch the art. So we have to take this sort of holistic approach to inspire local communities and governments to look after rock art uh, so that it's not destroyed for mining, for uh, development, agriculture. One of the best ways to conserve rock art for future generations is to raise awareness about its significance, its importance, not just for indigenous peoples, but for all of us. All of us have a rock art heritage. If you've enjoyed this film, please like, comment and share. Watch other films and subscribe to the channel for new content using the links on screen.